We've got something very special for us in consuming passions. These things that we've got today are from the ocean, uh, from a long way out off Rottnest, about 100 fathoms of water, just where the continental shelf drops away. And they're quite big animals. They get up to about two kilo. The ones we're looking at today and we'll be eating are about a kilo and a half, and I'm sure they'll be very delicate. OK, Ian, well, we're about ready to go. These ones have been in ice water. They're comatose, so they're just about all gone with the world. We stick them into the bucket. That's an old copper, which is a terrific thing to cook crabs and anything you like in, uh, with a gas, little gas cooker underneath. Uh, we put the lid on, keeps the water nice and hot, and gets to the boil a lot quicker. So we leave them in there, crabs will come to the boil, and for about 10 minutes, and we're about ready to go then. OK, so they've been on the boil for about 10 minutes. As long as they've had a good boil away there, we take them out of the hot water straight into cold water. You'll notice a lot of the legs and so on come away when they hit that section. So now it's just a matter of uh, letting them cool for a few minutes until you can handle them and then uh, putting them on the tray and we're just about ready to go. Now this is a thing that really strikes fear into the hearts of most consumers, how to prepare once you've cooked your crabs. Well, you've got to be prepared with crabs like this, Ian, they're spiky, and you've got to be prepared to get a few nips in the fingers now and again, but they're no trouble, really, and uh, taking the legs and so on off are easy. The big claws, they have the bit of plastic around them so you don't get nipped when they're, when they're in uh, progress, and they will always take a bit of a belt with a hammer before you can get at those. There's no problem with that either. We find, though, that to get the back off, seconds are the way to go. The old crabs that you have, like the blue manners and so on, are very easy to take apart, but these are fairly tough. And you can see I'm really struggling a bit you there. You are struggling a bit. So there. all you need to do is just to break that membrane a bit on both sides, and then you'll find you'll get the back off very easily because it's just that last piece that really is the problem. Now, I've put all the rubbish into a bucket. I've lined a bucket with the old shopping bag so I don't get a real mess on that. Now, this part you don't eat, do you? Which These is are the... all the gills and the, and the insides of the crab, but contained within that crab is this stuff, which is a mustard, they call, and... Uh, if you're prepared to be particular and take that out, it really adds something to a special sauce. You only need a tiny amount, don't you? It's very strongly flavoured. It is very strong. So get most of it out that way. I break them in half. And again, with a blue manna crab, you can snap them in half easily. These just need a little snip. That's where you're good living live on your vineyard. You know, you've got the seconders there ready to go. Break them in half and then I'll give them a good wash. And you just need to wash them out and you'll find they come out beautifully clean. No problem at all and stick them on the tray, get rid of the last gill that's hanging on there, and we're ready to go. We're in the Swan Valley in Western Australia. What a beautiful sunny day, and we're about to enjoy a feed of champagne crabs, thanks to Tony Mann, who will explain to me why we're using what looks like pliers to eat them with. Uh, yes, Ian, you need, uh, it's like most things, you, the good things are hard to get at, and there's no doubt about these champagne crabs, they do take some getting at. Um, some crabs are very easy to get your fingers into, but these are pretty tough, and you saw me belting those uh, claws earlier on. Now, there's a magnificent piece of uh, claw meat there, and that's ready to go and just eat. But this particular part, which is the body of the crab, you need to get at it, and you'll find when you do it with your fingers, you really can't. So it's a matter of, you know, snapping away with these little things. The legs break off very easily once you've done that, and then you can get at the meat quite easily. You just snap it away as you go. You do appreciate you're going to get in a bit of a mess eating these I things. love getting in a mess. I love it. Love the important thing is when you're doing these to have everything else set up nicely. You've got to have buttered bread there, lightly buttered and bread. And this is bread from the monastery at New Norcia, yes, I think, which is just uh, north and of it here. is magnificent bread. Uh, the fried or baked tomatoes, which are really Actually, they're nice. roasted, I believe, with herbs for about an hour and a moderate well, hour. Well, they're pretty good, I can tell you that. And uh, just a plain, simple green salad. And most importantly, we've got to have a bit of good Swan Valley wine. And there's a special trick with the Swan Valley wine. Yes, yours, there right? is. Uh, I have been fiddling with the crabs for the moment, uh, Ian, but... I'm not one for ice tongs, so fill up a glass with, uh, with ice. The important thing with this is um, that you have a wine that's full-bodied, and my father always was one to make a full-bodied white burgundy style. This is a Vidello 1990. It's about four years old. has a lovely golden colour to it. You're not going to pour it onto that ice? Pour it onto oh, the ice. It's the only heresy, way to go. isn't it? No, I don't think so. I think what it does is make the wine far more acceptable on a day like today. We're out in the open, sunshine, eating crabs. The ice keeps it nice and cold and just takes a bit of the alcohol off it. Which can't hurt at all. Can't hurt at all. And importantly, um, you need a full-bodied wine to do that. If you haven't got a full-bodied wine, you'll find the water in the ice just disappears and the, and the wine becomes almost like the water. 
but this you'll find is absolutely beautiful. Let's enjoy then. Tony Mann, thank you, and bon appetit. <laughs>